Welcome to Currency Wrap. This is Chris Keen from AkeenPointOfView.com. This is a new segment that we're going to be doing every day before the open in North America, sometime between 7 and 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And we'll also make another video before the open of the Asian and European trading to highlight uh, what we think is going to happen during the session and the uh, price levels that we're interested in. Mostly we're going to focus on price levels and Fibonacci retracements. Uh, because we don't really use that many indicators in our trading plan. We just follow the action of the market. Let's look at the first pair. It's the Euro USD. The Euro USD, uh, since moving up on Friday, the uh, excuse me, on Monday, the test 128.15, has been heading in a straight line down. Uh, today it broke through major support at 126.25. Um, that is a complete extension of a uh, move up from early January. Uh, now the next level of support we see is at 128.40, followed by 123.88, which would be the 127, 1.27 extension from the Fibonacci move up and from the highs in late February, early March. Um, it looks like the pair would need a pullback. What I would be looking forward to uh, getting short uh, once again would be a pullback up to 126.25. Or more preferably, a pullback all the way up to 128.15. I don't know if we're going to be able to get that this week. Um, or you could, if you're a more daring trader, look to go a little bit below the lows of the day and go long, hoping to get a quick scalp up to 126.25. But that uh, it looks a bit a little risky in this environment. Um, the next pair we're going to look at is the Great Britain Pound USD. Uh, heading into Asia tonight, you have to keep in mind that the English or British uh, GDP report is due at 8.30 GMT or 4.30 Eastern Time. Uh, this this report could be could cause a bit of volatility for the market. As you can see, the pair um, followed risk uh, with the other majors and moved up this week to, to move back up to support at the 158.35 before following falling down. It's in a bit of a consolidation zone. Uh, I would I would wait for a, a pullback once again up to 158.35 or for a move all the way down to 156 before I would consider any action in this pair uh, except for short scalps here and there. Um, let's look at the Aussie and the New Zealand. The Aussie and the New Zealand have been on a state, straight path down, down lately. I mean you can see that it's been, been down the majority of the last two three weeks. It looks to be in a funnel and the funnel is narrowing. If we can get a move down, well today it broke through the 98 barrier and uh, after it looked like it broke out on Monday and Tuesday out of its uh, above its trend line resistance and looked like it was getting ready to push higher. Um, if we get down to the next major support level at 0.9665, we could find some buyers unless we run into another major risk off environment based on the news that's been coming out of Greece concerning we have Italy, Europe concerning Greece and of course there's Spain and Italy to be concerned about also. Um, if we can get a move down to point nine six five we could find some buyers. But if we get a move back to, uh, to the trend line or more preferably what I would be looking for a move back to the point nine eight area. They could sign some selling at that point. Um, at that point this evening, the and New Zealand's in a similar situation. It's in a straight line lower. I would I would look into actually for, for a quick scalp if we hit this trend line here, we could get a bounce of 50 or so pips um, that we could lock in and quick. But you can see it's not a coincidence that it stopped right where it did today. It stopped right at the uh, 7460 area, 7459 area, which is a, a low that was created last uh, last December, a spike low. If we break through this, we could go all the way down to the more significant low that's at the, the 7375, 7370 area. Um, if we get another retest here, we could bounce higher in the Asian session before we, I'm not sure exactly how far we could go, but uh, if we did get all the way back up to 7675 in trading, we would probably find that quite a few sellers willing to come in at that price. The CAD has been a bit mysterious today. It uh, had major well, then a major resistance. Uh, it had uh, resistance up at 102.50, and it broke through and it spiked all, all the way up almost to the 103 level before following. Now it's about mid range. If we can stay above 102.50, we could see another push up to 103.15, and then ultimately up to 104.20. Um, but it seems like a pullback might be in the cards for that pair. And the last pair we're going to look at is the Japanese USD yen cross. Uh, coming out tonight is the Japanese monthly report, good. and we also have Chinese, Chinese manufacturing early in the Asian session. So it could have a little bit 
uh, of an influence on this pair. Um, tonight, uh, um, the pair once again is right at the around the 7940 area. This has been a strong resistance zone, and it's basically just been consolidating since the beginning of May. Um, I would look for any move down to 79 as a buying opportunity, and if we get any push back up to 80, 60, it could be a good chance to sell there just to uh, see if you can get a quick scalp lower. Um, other than that, I don't have a pure preference on the pair. Um, so for the news of tonight, let's recap. We have Japanese monthly report. We have Chinese manufacturing. We have a few European reports coming out at 7.30, and we have at 8.30, the Great Britain GDP report, and in North America, uh, the report of interest is durable goods. So once again, this is Currency Wrap, and this is Chris Keen from Keen Point of View. Thank you.